booze. My knee cracked right now. <laughs> so, again, Wine Wednesday last week and the week before, you guys saw that we have been featuring the vampire wines. Mm -hmm. We have three left. We have this Cabernet. We have a sparkling rosé, and we have a Merlot, or to some, Merlot. <laughs> and shout out to everyone over here in the chat room, Shelly TV. Yeah. Everyone. I, I feel it's, this is so cool. It's like when we were, we've been doing the Wine Wednesdays on VOC Nation, we still have the microphone here, but we have it hooked up to where like we're broadcasting, but no one's seeing us. So this is kind of cool that they're yeah. seeing how the we do things. The double time. Yeah. The multitasking that we do. <laughs> I do not compute. Double, double time. Okay, so Danielle, it's Danielle's choice this week. Which one do you want? Rosé all day. Rose I'm always okay. going to choose rosé. That's always. So if you didn't see our other videos, not only is this vampire wine, but they come with these cute little, or you could get them with the little capes. You can buy them, but I think the reason why they had them on i don't know i don't know if they were bought separately in my order or because it was a gift mm -hmm. or if it came with it but i kind of remember that they had to where if you got the three reds um you got a little cape or something i don't remember some kind of promotion go check them out online vampire wines okay so here we go it's so cute it has like a personality it does i feel like i should be doing it like this there we go yeah oh my goodness why it's just so cute. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant like something bad. No, nothing bad. Good. It's St. Patty's Day. We're having a good time. Oh, it's St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> you say. Where's me gold? <laughs> <laughs> All he wants is me gold. I know, dude. And why don't they give him the gold? We just started watching a few leprechaun movies and all he wants is his golden treasure why are people getting so it's greedy the coin the coin why? because why they're can't assholes they just, why can't they just give it to him they're willing to put their family and their own lives in jeopardy greed oh oh no oh way. do you need like i think there's a little no no oh no oh no it's gonna shoot off. Don't say that. I'm scared. I can. Um, do you need help? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> there we go. Ay, ay, ay. You know why? This is why. Okay. So, for most of you that know, that are watching, and that are here at the Beagle, yes. you know Danielle and I love champagne. And something that we've gotten many, 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 many times is those big ass cook wines because, or mm -hmm. champagnes because they are usually like anywhere from $9.99 to $11.99 and it's like a big ass cook. Very good deal. So <laughs> it would last. So it, like, especially when we were so broke, it really worked out for us, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know what it is with those big ass bottles of cooked wine, but Sometimes I keep calling it wine, um, champagne, but s like I would say 60 to 65 percent of the time, yeah, it's really hard to get the cork off, like really hard. Like, and even people that we are hanging out with at a party with or whatever, they're like, Oh my gosh, and they try to stick a knife, to, it's like, a whole thing, it's, it's like, whole, it's like, like almost a party spoon to like prop it open. And it's like, a, it becomes like almost like a um, they, game. Like who can it get so it? Who can get it? Who can get it? Yeah. Out? So there's been times where, uh, quite a few times when I was trying to get it off. One time it felt like it exploded in my hand and my hand hurt so bad. And then there's been quite a few times where it shot off and zoomed. Like somewhere off. Like not at, okay, when you look back, it's funny, but when it's happening, it's like, oh my God, where is it going to go? Is it shoot your eye out? I know, it's kind of scary. <laughs> That's why I'm all traumatized. For the longest time, I, I used to always be about popping bottles. I was always, and then when these cooks things happened, that's when I like got all traumatized. And so either I'd have someone else do it or I'd get an oven mitt. And I'm yeah. scared. <gasps> and I hate that. Give me your glass. Well, <clears throat> when I was a barista. Damn it! And I used to be a bartender at a 
French wine restaurant, we would have to open the bottles of champagne with a little cloth, a little dish cloth, because if it popped, it popped up in the cloth, and then, okay, that's fine. It's just safety precautions. And that's why I use the mitt. Yeah. Well, maybe people that judge me for the mitt, instead of that, they should have bought me a present of that little cloth. <laughs> you know? All right. So this is the rosé. Let's see. I've never had it, so this will be interesting. I'm really hoping that I like it. Yes. All right. Hmm. All right. Smells all right so far, so mm -hmm. that's good. I still am traumatized from that blue champagne we had. <laughs> well, and then there's another rosé that we need to talk oh. about. A sparkling rosé. Because for me, if I was to be an alcoholic beverage... I think I would be a rosé champagne. Mm. And I would be extra dry. Yeah. And so I love a nice sparkling rosé that is just really tasty. I love just normal rosés. Don't get me wrong, but that little extra bubble makes Where's, me very happy. What's that one? It's like with a G. It's, it looks like rosé. It starts with a G. Grenache? I don't know. I remember at Trader Joe's, they used to have a great, or I mean, they still do. Um, we just used to live by a Trader Joe's a time or two, so it was easier to get to. But um, they had, that's where I learned a lot about different wines, actually. Mm -hmm. But, you know. So what do you think? What I really think is, is I feel like, over here at the Beagle, this is how I really look, and I'm fine with that. But I feel I look weird over here. <laughs> oh, okay, so it has nothing to do with the wine. No. So <laughs> this is what my, you know, they say first, first impressions are everything. Oh, okay. My first impression of this is I really like this. I like the dryness of it because I mm. am a girl that I'll go extra dry with my champagne. I like that. Something that some rosés have, because I love rosé all day as well, but something that some rosés, they have this certain taste to it, and I've noticed that you're okay with it because you don't seem bothered by it, and like me, it's kind of like, almost like we've talked about before where it's like, oh, maybe I don't like this. Oh, maybe I do. And then you realize, oh, no, I don't. Like, that's mm -hmm. happened to me quite a few times with the rosé, and that sucked because I think it's so pretty. It's I so know. pretty and positive, and it just wants you to have a good time. So I'm grateful it doesn't have whatever. I'm trying to, I'm trying to discover what these different tastes are are that I don't like like when we went out to eat like a week or so ago I said would you describe this as like a buttery so maybe that's what it is I don't like a buttery taste well I think it's a certain grape and no no for sure but it's yeah. like the way it tastes like that's the best way to explain to people especially if their job is to pour you some wine and you, they want to know what you like it's like they know what they're talking about. So if you tell them, oh, I don't like this, I'm like, oh, okay, I know that, da, 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 you know. Versus the average person like us, even though we love it, we don't sit down and have conversations with people, well, that, this grape, da, da, da. Well, we recently had a run-in with a really unfortunate situation, and it was a rosé bubbly situation. And I'll grab the bottle, and you'll see how pretty it is and how tragic this situation was. Dude. Spoiler alert. I was so sad that this rosé didn't work out. And this rosé did have a taste that whether it's rosé or just um, like a white wine or champagne in general has that like weird taste. I just, I can't, I don't know what that what that grape is or how they do it or what but I don't like it it's a cava and I have been gifted on one of my birthdays a cava that was supposed to be very <laughs> expensive and I made sure to not even open this bottle of champagne mind you not wine champagne for a while I'm real champagne it. Yeah, and it had this like whole fancy case, and it was like a big deal. 
And when we popped it open and drank it, we're like, ooh, like, oh my gosh. And it was also a cava. So. Is that right? Mm hmm. So I'm going to read to you guys an article that is champagne versus Prosecco. Prosecco. This is cava. Mr. Boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so. With wines in general, especially French wines or whatever, a lot of times you'll see something like Côtes de Provence, yeah. Côtes de Rhône, all these kind of things. That is an indicator of the region where it was grown. So some regions are like flatlands that are like high moisture. They're, you know, it just it changes the taste of the grapes and just a bunch of different factors. So, um, as far as this article says, each of these wines are allowed to be dubbed Champagne, Prosecco, or Cava if they are made in the specific area which that name is associated with. Champagne, from the French region of Champagne, is by far the most specific and protective of its rule with legal ramifications in place for anybody attempting to call a wine not made from this region champagne. Oh. So that's why we liked our Gelson's because it's sparkling wine. It's not champagne. <laughs> it's So you have to be careful because some things will say champagne, and that's from Champagne front. Otherwise, you have sparkling wine. And I'm okay with sparkling wine. But I'm okay with – I've had champagne, though, and I liked it. So, cava refers to wine produced in regions in Spain, in particular, Catalonia. And the winemaking method is a little bit different. So, the traditional method for cava, or champignoise, for making champagne, involves creating a still wine and then bottling it with yeast and sugar, which will form bubbles when left to ferment. This can be a fairly costly method as it involves additional ingredients and the further time spent producing the fermenting of the wine. So that's why. Mm. Prosecco, on the other hand, uses a technique known as the tank method or the chaumont method, which is often seen as being far simpler and cheaper than the traditional method of making bubbles. Rather than adding extra flavors and ingredients to the wine, still wine will be left to ferment with a pressure tank. So it's interesting. That's why it's probably more expensive, the cava, because it has more, you know. So champagne needs the longest time for aging, with a minimum of 15 months required to gain the best flavors and aromas. Cava needs less time, mm. but should be aged for at least nine months. The shorter aging time for cava typically means that it will be less expensive than champagne, as both of these wines typically have had yeast added to them. It needs to be left to age so that extra flavor can develop properly. Prosecco, which has n not had any additional ingredients added, does not have a minimal aging needed and will taste best the sooner you drink it. Gotcha. So, you know, it just all in the process. So, so does that mean, okay, so I got that champagne or that cava. I got it at a place called Total Wine, which is a really awesome place. That's the first time I ever went there before. And um, there was one that was like a brute. So do you think it's still going to have that taste and I shouldn't bother with it then? If it's still... A I feel like if you're not into kava, and I want to learn more about it, about the grapes, because you also have... And I share the same taste where... I don't like a really harsh Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to have a Chardonnay, it has to be very smooth and dry and kind of have this sense of minerality. And if you're a wine drinker, you, you can understand what that means. Totally. That mineral, like, you know, we drink a lot of sparkling water, mm -hmm. so we get, like, that that little, ooh. That's, like, that's the best <laughs> way I can ex I, I, can I like that. But, but isn't that like, <laughs> like, is there any better way you can describe it? Like, no. Yeah, like this mineral, like kind of extra something that lifts something. 
And for Chardonnay and Cava, there's not that lift. It's just like more of a, like this mm, kind of feeling. And I can appreciate that kind of full bodiness in like a nice Pinot Noir, even any kind of red wine. I can appreciate a full body. Sometimes it's too much when it's smoky. Yeah. But as far as a white wine or a Chardonnay or a Cava, it's just, it's like this bite that I don't like. And it's like, yeah. ugh. And it just turns my stomach. And we actually, for me, I can just, okay, not my favorite. I'll still drink it. I literally poured this bottle down the drain. And that is like, that says a lot when that kind of thing happens. So I think maybe it has something to do with the grapes. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Well, how many clinks do you give this? And actually, it's called Dracula. Mm. So maybe they name it differently when it's the the rosé. Well, what I like about this, it's not like a typical rosé that's when I go to a restaurant. And it's very smooth, very floral. This has this little bit of bite due to the Dracula, like, yeah. No, I'm talking about the cat. I know, me oh, too. Okay. <laughs> All right. Inside joke. <laughs> but there is this bite to it that makes it different. And if I were to be drinking a champagne that has rosé in it, it would be a little bit smoother. This has something else going on. And I, I like it. I really like it. And I so appreciate it. So how many it. clinks? I would say, how many clinks out of clinks do I get? There's uh, five. five. Just because I don't want to discriminate. But this is very complex. And I say 4.5. Wow. I appreciate the personality and the different levels that this provides. Thank you. <laughs> that was good. What about you? So, it's bold. The bold and the beautiful bitch. So, here's the thing this is going to be my factor. How much alcohol percentage is in it? That's always a factor for me. Okay, 11.5. That's good for a rose. It is, but in champagne. But I've seen tighter. Yeah, and you probably had smoother. But here's the thing. I would give it four and a half clinks, or 4.5 as you eloquently put it, <laughs> if the alcohol content was at least 13%. Wow, that's asking a lot. That is. But if it if this had thirteen no okay twelve point twelve point five twelve point five mm -hmm. if it was twelve point five percent I would give it I'd give it five clinks I think it tastes really nice it almost makes me feel like it's like like soda esque like soda. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing with the kava conversation we had, there is those different accents of intensity that you do get with the kava, but this has a smoothness and this isn't some kind of just blend or something that you just serve to somebody who is not a wine drinker. I think this is very sophisticated and I really appreciate it. I think that... Um... I don't know, like, the way the bubbles are hitting me in my palate and in mm -hmm. my nose, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, that's what I'm seeing. That reminds me of, like, soda, but it doesn't taste like soda. It doesn't taste sweet or anything like that. I'm not a fan of sweet, so it's really good. It makes me not even feel it's a rosé. It just makes me feel like I'm having a really awesome drink. I like it. Yay! 
I like it. Well, it's great because we struck out on the last one and had the pretty bottle. And even though I try to show you guys the bottle, it's actually pink and sparkly. And I don't think you guys were able to see that. But it's like, oh. I know. And I would love to keep this bottle and put flowers in it and stuff like that. But it's going to be a sham. It's going to be a rouge. Yeah. It's not real. There's a, there's other bottles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, over here on the Wine Wednesday video, we'll be back next week. We got two more left. We got Ooh. the Merlot. 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 <laughs> and we got the Cab. So we'll see what happens next week. Make sure to subscribe if you would like to see that video so you don't miss it. And until next time, I'm Shelly from Kelly. She's Danny California, and we'll be clinking you later. Oh, Adios. No, empty. <laughs> you guys, so here's the thing. Look at Minnie. We forgot to even showcase her little outfit. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. We, look at I had to turn the camera back on. Look. 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 She's look beautiful. Her. She's beautiful. <laughs> oh, she's a little babe. And she just wants you guys to know that. She wants you guys to say, have a safe and happy St. Patrick's Day. Even though when you see this, it's already past. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs>